in the home stretch now. So we're going to have two really short uh, bits on deformation kinematics and a, a derivation of a strain. So let's think about a body, a material body, and uh, a point in that mo body, and then we give it some kind of deformation. So this point, capital P, in the uh, undeformed or the reference state, moves to point little p, point little p, in the deformed state. So the vector that points from the origin to point P is capital X, and the vector that points uh, in the deformed state is little x, and the displacement is uh, given by U. Right? That's the vector difference between x a or x cap little x i minus capital X a final minus initial. So after deformation all the particles in this body will move. Right? So we can define a mapping. Right? We always come back to mappings. Uh, hold on, am I still recording? Yes I am. We can always define mappings between uh, the final and the initial. So we use kappa for this mapping. So we can write the deformed state as a function of the initial state. Or we can invert it and write the initial state as a function of the final state. So we have some really common shorthand notation here and it gets a little confusing uh, because we ignore the kappa explicitly. We just implicitly put it in there. So we write deformed configuration explicitly as a function of the uh, reference and the reference as an explicit function of the uh, deformed. Oh, I said that backwards. The deformed as an implicit function of the reference. All right? So we're we're gonna I'm gonna try and stick to this notation as much as possible. Lots of different authors use different things, but I'm always gonna use lowercase for the current configuration and uppercase for the uh, the reference. So the velocity, right? The rate at how things move, fast things move, is the change in position with change in time. All right, so the derivative of little x with respect to time. The acceleration is nothing but the second derivative of that. All right, how x is moving. Um, there's an important limitation to the deformation field. This is an important assumption that's going to follow everything through. Uh, and that is kappa and kappa inverse. Well, kappa has to be a smooth, continuous, and invertible function. Right? We have to be able to uh, go th through from the reference to the deformed in a physically possible process. So if you think about um, this notion that in a ma linear mapping, a sphere can at most transform to an ellipsoid, right? what that implies is that points that are close in the reference state must still remain close in the deformed state. Right? They can get farther apart or closer together, but they can't magically jump points that were right next to each other in the body can't magically jump to opposite sides of the body uh, after deformation. Right? All the points that were still in between them still have to be in between them. We can't reorder and uh, and also we can't 
we have to be invertible, right? So we can't go from a 3D body to a perfectly 2D sheet, right? And you still need some 3D thickness and things like that. Okay. So now we need to describe how we've, we've defined the motion, we've defined the mapping, but now we need to describe the motion. And there's two ways we can we can go about that. The first is the uh, Lagrangian idea, or the material description of motion. Right? We we keep track of individual material points. We don't care about the spatial positions. So we write everything with respect to the uh, undeformed frame the undeformed configuration all right and time this is equivalent to having a, a bag full of marbles and dumping them out right and we keep track of the individual marbles right we've labeled all the marbles in their original box in order and we dump them out and we shake them up we don't we we still keep track of that marble based on its original, the label that we gave it originally. In the undeformed configuration, we labeled that point. And we're going to keep track of that point or that marble through the whole thing. The opposite end of that is the Eulerian description or the spatial description. We keep track of everything by where it is now not where it was at the initial time. We, we keep a control volume. And I say, I'm looking at point X. What particle is at point X now? Right. Whereas the Lagrangian description says, I'm looking at particle 1. Where is it now? So they're two very different uh, ideas. So one is written with respect to positions in the reference configuration. The Eulerian, on the other hand, is written with respect to positions in the current configuration. Solid mechanics, we tend to formulate everything in a Lagrangian manner. Fluid dynamics people like to formulate things in Eulerian framework, which makes sense. We're interested in a material, what's happening in the, our material body. Right? I want to know... Uh, how is the stress changing near a triple point in a in a polycrystal metal right i i i don't care that that triple point is translated by uh five millimeters i want to know what the stress is at that point whereas in eulerian framework they're looking at i want to know turbulent flow near some nozzle output so they're very concerned about that spatial thing but they don't keep want care about keeping track of each atom uh, as it goes uh, as it goes by okay so we're going to uh, for the most part stick to uh, everything in, in the Lagrangian frame so the displacement we write as the current configuration minus the initial configuration that gives us our uh, displacement so you can look at this this is a uh, the initial reference frame is a constant that doesn't depend on change so the derivative of displacement also gives you velocity All right so the derivative of the displacement with respect to time is the same as the derivative of the current configuration with respect to time and we're going to uh, use this notion of a displacement gradient quite a lot this is the derivative of our displacement with respect to position in our initial body, right? So it's how is the how does the displacement change with position? This particle moved this way, and this particle moved this way, but not as much. So there's a a gradient in displacements uh, through the sample, right? So it's the oh I missed some partials here. So this is partial, the 
derivative of displacement vector with respect to position. All right. We can also we can break it up this way, and this becomes the derivative of the current frame with respect to the reference current configuration with respect to the reference minus identity. All right. This term partial x partial x has an important name. And that's the deformation gradient tensor. All right. What the displacement gradient tells us is how the displacements are, are spatially s spread out in our sample. If we want to get to strain, though, we need to know how the points move relative to each other. Right? I need to know, is a line segment drawn between two points getting longer or shorter? Right. I also, in many cases, want to know, is that line rotating? And that's the information that the deformation gradient gives us. It tells us the relative change in position between two points. And it nicely subtracts out the absolute change in position of those points, or the average abs right position. If both of the points move to the right by 5 centimeters, and then one also moved down one and down one unit and the other part moved particle moved up one unit the net displacement or the next the deformation gradient is going to tell you that they separated in the vertical direction by two units and it's going to ignore the fact that they that there was a uh uh translation right and so that that Deformation gradient is the derivative of the current configuration with respect to the reference configuration. Um, and it's a really important uh, characteristic of the local of the local deformation. Okay, and we will stop there and pick up the last bit with strain.